guys this is Sharzat Morgan I wanted to make a short video explaining how therapists had let me down in our marriage I realize now that there's nothing wrong with me I spent 30 years thinking what is wrong with me what is wrong with me because my marriage wasn't working and my relationships with men just seemed odd like I don't even want to I haven't dated anyone in the nine years since my divorce but occasionally I would hook up with a guy it would be a younger guy and then and then he would blow me off after we had sex once or twice and I would go into this how can I make you love me mode but that never lasted long like I wasn't stalkerish but I would feel inwardly very distraught and like, what is wrong with me? And why do I like these younger guys? And how come I'm not dating? And then in my marriage, you know, why was I married 25 years to this very unavailable man? And what was wrong with me? Like, why did I pick him and all of this? Well, what was wrong with me was like, I had decided I would never marry someone who was grandiose, um, kind of rager controlling like my Persian father I would never be a doormat like my codependent mother and um, I ended up marrying a guy who was kind of like my mom who was nice and would never leave me yet was emotionally stonewalling and I kind of modeled after my mother who I adored who always wore pretty dresses and meditated and was sweet and her role was I must be pleasing to men. My mother never dated again after my parents divorced when I was 10, so thank God I didn't have a revolving door of men coming through our house. We had a very stable childhood then growing up, so I'm grateful for that. However, I did see myself in that, yes, how can I be pleasing to men? Um, and that would only come up in those rare situations when I hooked up with the guy, that, well, with my ex-husband the last three years of our marriage, and even before that I hung in there with a guy who was stonewalling, emotionally neglectful, extremely emotionally neglectful and avoidant, and I didn't see it because there was nothing on the outside. You know, everything on the outside was A+. Plus. But emotionally between us, it was it was cold and it was dead and all my attempts at connection were met with a wall so I would you know my the way I responded to it was either I was angry but mostly I would withdraw and shut down for a few years I found solace in Vicodin and then later on when I stopped doing that I went into my how can I make you love me mode how can I get you to open up what is my part? What am I doing wrong? And most of all, how can I deal emotionally with this neglect? How can I deal with my anger? How can I deal with my pain? And through all the years of the different therapists, I probably had been to therapy like 10 different times or less in all those years of marriage. No one ever pointed out to me how I could deal with those difficult emotions or that I was um, in a marriage with a blatant stonewaller um, and that it was okay for me to leave him. I wish I would have learned early on that I was married to a stonewaller who was never going to open up to me and that it was okay for me to leave him, that I deserved more, that my bids for connection deserved to be met. Because all along I was like, well, I guess after two years of marriage, it's all downhill. You know, I guess men don't really have feelings. You know, we are, at least we're a family. We might not be a couple, but at least we're a family. And ultimately, you know, we had three great children and maybe it was better than raising them in separate homes. So I I'm not going to say that, you know, I would do it differently because I had never met somebody else I wanted to marry in all those years. And in my nine years that I've been divorced, I haven't met anybody else I want to date. Uh, my attraction tends to be towards younger men because I think they're more attractive and they have good energy. Maybe they just feel 
like they're nicer to me it feels like they're nicer to me like they want to please me but I would still go into this people pleasing mode and if you read my book the fuck list or the rewrite what I did for sex you'll see that after my divorce I started hooking up with these young guys I didn't even know young guys liked older women but I would hook up with these young guys and I would be like oh my god this is so great I want to see you again and they just wanted to fuck, rail and bail, smash and dash, um, whatever the acronym, you know, words are for it. And then I would go into this very distraught mode, internally distraught. Um, and I, you know, and I would think if he just knew how much I liked him, he would want me. And I didn't know why I was doing it. I'm like, what is this? What is this coming from? There was even a woman too that I did this with and I got... I, I was projecting this fantasy onto them. I didn't even know them. And I would get into this very helpless mode that took me out of my peace and my joy and everything. I spent the last five years not hooking up at all. I have sex with my clients. I don't get attached to them. Um, but then two months ago, I did decide, hey, I'm going to hook up with a guy that I want, not just my, have sex with my clients. And that same pattern came out with me. I was completely disempowered. I went into a complete people-pleasing mode. Again, with these guys, it never lasts them more than a week or two. So it's not like I go into this long thing. But the point is that I'm happy going through life. And then I get into this pattern with the guy where I completely become this, um, how can I get you to love me and get so inwardly distraught? And what I learned is that I did copy my mother who I so adored and I didn't even know I was copying her and you know this inward story of I must be nice to men I must be open to men um, and you know what I don't I don't have to be open to anyone you know I never saw modeled that a man should pursue a woman my dad always made it about him he came home from work we had to run up and greet him you know, we had to do what he wanted. So it was our job to go to him. Even as an adult, I had to fly to Omaha to visit him. He only came here twice to see me. I was always, I had to go to him. Everything was going to him. His wife now, even his beautiful wife and my beautiful mother have to serve him and wait on him. And I was like, there is such a beautiful aspect, you know, and I went into customer service. There's a beautiful aspect to serving someone and waiting on someone and honoring someone in that way however i th i didn't realize we have to be careful that the person deserves that and the man definitely has to pursue the woman and court the woman and be worthy of her opening and her gifts this was never modeled to me it was always like we got to do for my dad he never honored us and tried to you know what do we want how do we feel what is important to us coming to us, nourishing us. That was never done. It was always just, you know, I love my children. I want you guys around so you can, you know, wait on me the way I want. And that was love. So my ex-husband was so much better than that. And so I thought I had a good marriage. But really, um, this is like my third time making this video. I don't even remember what I shared now. But um, in the therapist we went to, over the years as I was very distraught and dragged him into therapy no one ever pointed out to me that he was the stonewalled blatant and that I was also well I don't really know what my situation was then I would say that he was the stonewaller and that I or early on I would either get angry or withdrawn later on I would just get withdrawn like we didn't argue we would just stop talking to each other for days at a time I didn't know that there was a pattern that could be broken. And in the end, this is what I want, uh, you know, I, you would have to read my book to get all the different things. I knew I lost my sex drive. I didn't realize it was because I was so repulsed by the way he was having sex with me so coldly and just using me uh, to get off. He did tell me at the end of our marriage, the last three years when he was really in love with me, he did say sex is only physical. And I didn't believe him, but he meant it. To him, it is only physical. He's unable to bring any emotion into it. Um, he, grew up, he grew up with parents who didn't model emotions. They didn't model anger. They never said, I love you to the kids. 
and so he's avoidant because love was never modeled to him um i don't know i don't know what his issues are but what we learned in the therapy course was the only leverage that um in the situation of a grandiose husband man and a latent woman um that the only leverage that you really have for the grandiose person is that this person is threatening to leave and it's going to leave. So it's like Mr. Jones, you know, it's all right that you don't want to have feelings. There's only one problem. You're married and your wife is about to leave. You know, it's not, or, you know, Mr. Jones, um, it's not that you're wrong for not having emotions, except that this wife needs your emotions and if you don't show them to her, she's going to leave. Or um, you've been neglecting your wife for 20 years, and this is now the price you have to pay for it. She's about to walk out the door. Um, so something like this. You know, you want her. This is the way that someone should have talked to my husband. Um, you want her. You've got to nourish her. You've let her down chronically, repeatedly for years, and you're paying for it now. She started building a life without you, and she's not really clear how necessary you are in her life. Right or wrong, she sees you as someone who's not that interested in her. And if you're not that interested in her, that's not enough to keep her. That's not enough to keep anybody. I'd have you, da 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 Listen to her, do things for her, move outside your comfort zone and be more giving to her by a factor of 20. And that's copying and right or wrong, I don't care. This is what you have to do to keep her. Are you willing to do it? And, and now I'm reading off the way that Terry Real did this in a couple session. And that, that was a huge breakthrough for me because this couple, you know, the guy was like my ex-husband, a really nice guy, just emotionally completely checked out. And they had also been married over 20 years. So um, now in my, in the case of this couple, the man was, yes, I want to keep her. Yes, I'm going to do these things because he didn't want her to leave. Now the other, so that's how you get the grandiose person to open up. The wife is threatening to leave and he doesn't want, so he's going to open up. If that doesn't work, um, you can also use the children, especially if you have someone who's a rager. Um, your children are watching you. Do you want them to end up like that? You know, that that will also do it. Now, in my case, that didn't even fucking work. Even though the last three years of our marriage, she was so in love with me. When I went to the, and I want to make this point, when I was going to the grocery store, he would want to go with me, even though he hated the grocery store. We were having sex three times a week. He would invite me to go to coffee, uh, go on bike rides, go on runs. He would come home from work and he was no longer coming home to the kids. He was coming home to me. We would have dinner together. We would go to bed together. He would massage my feet. So there was a lot of closeness. Um, he was much happier, and still, when I was willing to leave over this, he didn't try to stop me, and he didn't open up. And that's what I want to say, like, I had a very walled-off man, but he wasn't mean or angry. That's the thing I want to say about these walled-off people. It doesn't have to be an alcoholic, because he wasn't. It doesn't have to be a rager or a cheater or a gambler, because he was none of those things. To this day, he has never talked bad about me. He's always been nice and respectful. But he's just walled off, so walled off, so afraid to feel anything. that he was willing to let me go rather than make those changes in him. I remember my boss at the time, and I have a very emotionally open boss, a very great mentor, a really great person of a man. And he said, you know, Sharzat, I can't believe it. He goes, he's willing to let you go rather than make some change, look at himself. And that's exactly what it was. So in my case, the leverage wouldn't have worked, but I, I didn't know 
that he was the walled off thing was the problem. I thought, what's wrong with me? Now, often when in the case when a man does finally open up and the woman who was like complaining all those years and found her own meaning, she will have to make some changes too because often these women are very angry and they feel justified in staying angry. Now, that wasn't the case for me, but often those women have a mother who was angry and so they're copying the angry mother. That wasn't the pattern for me. I want to be very clear. My pattern was more of the people pleaser. Um, how can I get you to love me? What's wrong with me? Uh, so uh, yesterday when I had all these insights, I texted him. We hadn't talked about our marriage in nine years. And I, um, as I was doing more of this work on myself, I did email him a few months ago. It's like, because I kept wondering, like, he looked angry so much of our marriage. Like, what was he angry about? Like, talk, say anything. Even at the end of our marriage, I would say, what can I do to be a better wife? I thought, because I could tell he was unhappy with some things or angry. It's like, why, why is he being so cold to me? What can I do to be a better wife? And he would say, cook more. In fact, whenever he went down on me, I would have to make at least a one hour dinner to repay him. I did that. I didn't really like doing that, but I did it. Just so you know. If you want to read about my sex life with him, which was horrible, because it was cold and just physical, like he basically used me as an ejaculation device. That's what I want to say. And I allowed it. Um, anyway, so... Um... I sent an email and I said, I'm giving you the space to tell me everything you were angry with me about. Because, you know, when someone doesn't say anything, it's just gets you kind of got, got me kind of angry and frustrated. Like, what's going on? Like, can you say something? Anything? And he never replied to the email. So I was like, okay, you know, he didn't want to talk about anything when we were married. He's not going to want to talk about anything now. I have to accept that that's his boundary. I don't want to talk. Is his boundary. But yesterday, after I had all these insights in the last couple of days, I was like, you know, I'm not going to blame myself anymore and take all the blame and think something's wrong with me for the relationship. So I texted him. And I said, I took those pills because of that being in the loveless marriage. That's why I took those pills. Because I remember when I told him I'd stop taking the pills, he said, was it that bad being married to me that you had to take those pills? And I told him no, because I want to take full responsibility. I chose to do that. And for years, I kept thinking, what's wrong with me? I should have known better. Why did I do that? You know, it was the only way I could survive in that loveless marriage. Otherwise, I would have had to leave him or force him to open up, which when I stopped taking the pills, I did. And three years of pain. That Those last three years when I was trying to get him to love me were the most painful years of my life. And no one knew how to make me be okay. And then I went into how can I be okay with these feelings? How can I be okay with being angry? How can I be okay with being sad and so distraught? And I remember thinking, I just wish someone would knock me over the head with a frying pan because these feelings are so painful and uncomfortable. And I just was so distraught. And that's one reason I got into coaching. One thing I am good at, I know how to help you with those difficult feelings and feeling them in your body and going inside of them to release them or letting them go through the top of your head. I do know how to do that, thank God. But um, I kept thinking, what's wrong with me? Anyway, I'm, I'm digressing again and sidetracking. If you have a blatant and a latent... Um, the only leverage over the blatant is the the only leverage that you that someone has over someone who's walled off or grandiose is that they're going to leave. In the case of my ex-husband, he let me leave. Um, so nothing would have changed him. And so, okay, I was going to confirm. I was I was like, you know what? I'm going to tell him this wasn't all my fault. That's what I wanted to tell him. I finally realized this week 
this wasn't my fault. He had a big chunk to play. He was a walled off guy. He was walled off. That was a huge problem in our relationship was that he was so walled off. And my part was modeling my mother and not realizing it, being okay with stuff, putting up with stuff. And honestly, a lot of me didn't want to leave. I didn't want to break up my family. I liked having my family life. So, you know, life is sometimes messy. And he said, was that your justification? Maybe you, we got so distant because of those pills. And I said, no, no one can last in a loveless marriage like that. And I said, I hope you're better. Treat your current wife better than that or she'll leave you too. And he said, at least she loved me. I don't know why he said loved me. Um, he didn't say loves me. And I said, I did too. I did love you too. And he never replied to that. Actually, we only exchanged like three texts each. It wasn't a lot. I forgot to put this one in. Um, when he said, was that your justification? I said, that was how I dealt with it. And I said, I'm willing to have a conversation with you. I'm not willing to do this over text. I'm willing to have a conversation with you. And he says, Sharzat, I just want to be civil. I don't have anything to talk to you about. Again, walls. And then I was like, trying to be civil. That makes me think he's a type one love avoidant because like, I'm not going to get mad at you. I'm not going to talk about things. I'm going to be civil and civil people don't feel Civil people don't get angry. Civil people keep it zen, cool, walled off. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry you're not happy. You know, at least she loved me. Uh, so resigned, you know, walled off. And again, he wasn't mean to me. He wasn't raging at me. He's just behind a wall. And so what I want to say about if you're dealing with someone who's behind a wall, you know, that's there for their protection. You know, it makes me sad. It Right now, I'm feeling very sad that he's stuck behind that wall and that that's how he has to protect himself. But until I was making this video, I was very in touch again with that feeling of frustration I felt with him when he was always pushing me away and I couldn't get closer and he was always a no and I don't want to talk about it and I don't want to do this and I don't want to go to therapy and I don't want to go to this. Uh, I went to my ultrasounds myself. I went to every parent-teacher conference except two by myself, the parenting classes by myself. I mean everything by myself, the meditation courses because he didn't want to do any of it with me. I got, you know, and then he just wanted to slide it in to get off. And while he never held my hand or asked me out, but I digress. All those feelings of like that feeling in my stomach of repulsion to him and feeling that wall, I remembered all that. And so I was like, I'm so glad I'm out of that marriage. It was so frustrating to be with someone who was just so walled off. Um, as to me, my own reactivity pattern is, um, to blame myself, to withdraw. And yeah, I do sometimes get angry and then I'll be like, fuck you. I do that. I'll do like, fuck you. Um, cut you off. And then that's it. I'm not like, uh, I don't like to be angry. It's not a comfortable place to me, but I don't let people mess with me either, except those occasional guys. Um, I have very low tolerance for guys messing with me or having access to me. So my reactivity tends to be, um, fuck you who needs you anyway. But now I've been single for nine years, so I don't even really know. Um, I've been working the last few years really on my reactivity and uh, building more friendships. And, um, you know, I'm not perfect. However, right now what I'm really in, aware of is right after my divorce, I was still going to this, like, I want to be open to life. I want to be open to possibilities. I'm going to be open to men to create my next relationship. 
while still feeling repulsed by most men. Come on, most men are not that hot. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You know, that's where you have to like court a woman and trying to just counter that by being open. It's like, no, I'm not going to be open to men. I'm going to be, I mean, I am nice and friendly to men, but when it comes to romance and stuff, I'm like, you know what? You got to earn me. You got to work for it and just be like, the way I used to be when I was married, where I was not open and receptive to men trying to get my attention. Like I'm back there now and it feels fucking good. It feels really good to be like, you know what? I don't have to go around my whole day being open to meeting a potential man or looking for a man or thinking there's, you know, I should be on a dating app and all this. Fuck that. I'm like, you know what? I'm good right here. If a man wants my attention, let him fucking earn it. Let him fucking come and get it because I'm going to do the opposite of what my dad did to my mom and what my mom did to my dad. And I'm going to go that way through life for a little bit and just see how that feels. And I'm looking forward to taking um, more. The R I took relational life therapy one. I am in the course number two right now, and then I'll do number three. And then I'll see, learn some more skills that have to do with relationship but the first class was about seeing the pattern. The second class we're in now has to do with inner child trauma or trauma, trauma and how we adapt and respond to depending on what we learned in our childhood homes. And then the third part is teaching relational skills. And then this is all work that I'm going to be doing with couples. So I'm going to be practicing on couples. I can already do some practicing now if you want to try, but I don't have how to relate healthily yet. And that's the part I have no fucking idea. I never saw a healthy relationship model anywhere in my freaking life. It's certainly not in porn. It's certainly not on the Hollywood movies. I certainly didn't see it with my parents. So I'm like trying to just wing it here. And by being open hearted, fuck that. I'll be open to God. I'll be open to my friends. I'll be open to my children. But any men out there who want to date me, you know, do a little work and let me see if you deserve me. You know, instead of me trying to get you to love me, let me see if you even deserve me. And that's the attitude I have now. Uh, do you deserve me in this way? Do you deserve me romantically? Show me that you deserve me. And that's not me being on a high horse. That's me saying, are you going to put some effort in? Let me see you put some effort into trying to get me. Don't sign into my DMs, you know. Don't just... Send a, hey, they're beautiful on the dating app. I'm done with all that. I deleted my bumble. Like, come up to me in real life. Woo me. You know, show me some interest. Go to some effort. Um, that is not something I saw in my childhood home where all the women had to wait on my dad. So I'm just doing the opposite. Not in a bitchy way, but let me see what you got. I'm not looking. You know, you got to make make it worth it. And as to my part, I'm super freaking nice and receptive. So it's not like I'm turning into a bitch. It's just like I'm raising the standards. Like here's here's like a little wall. You got to jump over the wall, boy. Um, I just feel a lot better. Like, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. <sighs> because I kept thinking, what is wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with me. Um, I did have the unhealthy pattern of modeling my mother you know my mother who hates men by the way too so there might still be more to discover as we shall see but thank you so much for watching my video again if you um want to get my books they're available on amazon the fuck list it's a fun juicy sex memoir sure to get you turned on and intellectually interested and in what i did for sex and i also am a life coach uh, it's $150 an hour to work with me. I really don't have that many coaching clients, to be honest. I would like to get more. And once I'm done with the couples course, I'm going to start practicing on couples. Um, I really think that people are going to change a lot more if there is a couple relationship and they don't want to lose their spouse. But again, sometimes they're willing to lose the spouse because they don't want to look at themselves. It's too painful, and that's very sad. But that's the truth. And, you know, maybe you, you want to know that that's your situation. You might just be like me, married to some guy 
who's so walled off, he's never going to change. And then it's good for you to know that um, you're trying to get him to love you, and he never can, he never will, because he's, he's safely protected behind that chunk of armor, that concrete wall. Thanks for watching my video.